Blackbird is the personification of a real pirate in the world of One Piece, cunning and moving through the shadows. He is the opportunist who has no scruples to get what he wants, he steals, plunders and kidnaps, he kills and takes whatever he wants. And if you have something that he seeks, his destiny is blurred by total darkness. In the most unexpected way of all, Law finds himself face to face against Blackbird. And he has something that Teach seeks more than anything. A fragment to the path to the last island. What to expect from Law vs. Blackbird who finally Teach moves? What secrets can be revealed here? Do you want to know everything about one of the biggest clashes on the seas in one piece? So come and I'll explain everything now. Hey guys! Evadro Fusari with another video for you. How are you? I hope you all are doing wonderfully. I'm super excited. Yes, animation is definitely coming into its own in Egghead. Which in my humble opinion is the best arc in One Piece. It's the most revealing arc because we have great legends moving. Barba Negra and Law now getting comfortable. New fruits revealed, different secrets. There's no way Egghead won't be placed at the top of the best arcs of the entire series. And this episode, my friends, finally Blackbird shows his movement, which he was doing it and waiting all this time. Watch until the end. This video is really cool. If you're new here, watch it. Beautify. If you like it, I ask you to subscribe. Now if you're already from the worst generation, hit the like button to give this video a boost. Now with you everything about One Piece. 1092. So let's go my friends. Our episode begins in the seas. The CP0 ship which approaches Egghead, Rob Lucci, Stussy, and Kaku are on board. Kaku questions the reasons why Dr. Vegapunk created six versions of himself to take advantage of. The time of his research, and Lucci reveals the names of his six versions, Punk 06, Your, O Desire, Punk 05, Atlas, Ira, Punk 04, Pythagoras, The Wise One, Punk 03, Edson, The Talent, Punk 02, Lilith, The Evil One, Punk 01, Shaka, The Righteous One, I love what Oda did here. He didn't follow that cliche of doing the deadly sins, he created his own variants. They seem to be different aspects of the Vegapunk personality, and quite possibly he wanted to remove those aspects of his personality that distracted him, intrinsically to achieve his dreams. I think this is what allowed him to do ethically questionable, morally gray things. Now he really needs money to finance all his activities, so his supersonas deal with requests related to these topics. We also see here on the ship a Kumar Seraphim, with black lunar wings and a huge star on his chest. I believe that here could be the salvation of Bonnie's father. Seraphim Kumar is a clone of Kumar. Who knows the Vegapunk didn't store the fragment of Kuma's soul in this clone. Remember the previous episode, and I will always remind you of this. Vegapunk Lilith says that controlling primordial, primitive desires is impossible. This is the biggest revelation, okay? It's the biggest reveal between now and the end of Egghead, because it's the hint at how they're going to bring the original Kumar back. Rob Lucci says that their mission is to eliminate all Vegapunk and not damage the laboratories. Valuable items, and we have something curious. Lucci for the first time questioning the government's attitudes when they give an order to end the most useful, intelligent man in the world, and you may ask yourself the same thing. Why have a genius affiliated with the world government killed, and it's even easy to answer? That's what I do even with other questions. Why erase an entire kingdom affiliated with the government? Why decimate brilliant and knowledgeable O'Harris? Why did they kill the king of an allied kingdom? Because he knows a lot, and close to the truth, the cleanup is increasing for the final war. After Admiral Ryakuju reported his go into Wano, the world government probably realized that the Vegapunk had lied about the artificial devil fruit. There from Punk Hazard be a failure failure. The world government knows this and now wants him dead to stop him from making more fruit or passing on his research to the enemies of the world government. Lilith said that the shark was a failure because it continues to eat the ships. Although it is a mechanism of insanely powerful and good defense, but why? They probably hold themselves to insanely high standards. And that's why Momonosuke's fruit is a failure. Guys, because of the color. It's pink, not blue. The dragon wasn't blue. Apart from the connections to the revolutionaries, Vegapunk knows secrets of the world and the ancient kingdom. 
and is reviving some technologies. Do you know where he should end up sheltering? In Wano, because he can cure smiles? And finally, he also sees if he was the man Sukiyaki was waiting for. Remember, because Sukiyaki has a teapot fused with an Akuma Nomi. And this is something only Vegapunk is capable of doing, maybe he's even a long-time friend. I'm looking forward to seeing Luffy vs. Rob Lucci here in Egghead also because of the animation. So we have some fun scenes with Egghead, Luffy, Bonnie and Chopper gorging themselves on food in that Vegapunk machine. And I laughed a lot here at Atlas saying that they eat a lot and they have bulging bellies. To which Jin responds that it's always been like this. Not only that, they change clothes with Vegapunk's special machines. Luffy Chopper and Bonnie wear futuristic clothes and Jin wears Hawaiian clothes. Jin was the best addition to the straw hats, especially in his new Hawaiian outfit. He really has that single dad. Vibe taking his three kids on vacation, while Atlas has to go back to her job. Which is well, her job is to punch the projections of the island, highlighted here guys. For the other robots that appear, each with a profession, language, history, they are the laboratory assistants. But you can see that Vegapunk created something very specific for each area of study. Luffy then ends up noticing Kumer, a uniformed police robot who attacks them for stealing food and clothes. Luffy is about to punch this Kumer here, but Bonnie stops him. She says that Kumer is his real father and his only family. And we can see an image of a much younger Kumer holding Bonnie when she was still a child. Seeing Bonnie's pain in this episode and the revelation of her bond with her father ends up recontextualizing all of Kuma's appearances. And the Bonnie's journey so far ends up feeling sad, right? Having seen Kuma in such horrible states, here it was very sad to see him smiling holding his daughter. And it's interesting that Bonnie, one of the few supernovates we never saw fighting the pacifists back in Sabauti, makes sense now. It's crazy how Oda waited more than 10 years to reveal this to his fans. It also makes a lot of sense now, because she was crying while watching the Marinford War there. Seeing all those pacifists, it must have been quite traumatizing for her to witness that. But then, of course, without giving away too many spoilers, but still bringing several facts throughout the series, on SBS, Oda revealed the age of the Supernovados. Bonnie was the only one with the observation that his age was apparent due to his altering fruit age. And then you have this suspicion that Bonnie is younger in your career, right? Because she looks like crying in Marinford, crying at Leavely, crying here again, on the island. Even more, in the original Japanese there, when she addresses Kumer, she says daddy instead of father, so it sounds like a child, okay? Our little bell princess really is younger than you think. But let's go to the most shocking part of this entire episode. Something that no one expected at the beginning of the arc. A true subversion of expectations when we see Marshall de Teach ambushing Law in the middle of the sea, using his earthquake fruit, Teach is shaking Polar Tang, who can't take much more pressure and needs to emerge to the surface. Blackbird is quite a character, killing his crewmate Thatch just to steal the dark devil fruit, killing his father Whitebeard to steal his devil fruit in me, his territory and his Yonku position. Attacking Amazon Lily to steal another devil fruit from the Pirate Empress. Kidnapping the hero sailor, who did him a favor in the rocky port. And now trying to steal the road poneglyph to get to the last island. Laugh Tail Blackbird is without a doubt the person who most reflects what a real pirate should be. Like, or at least what pirates were like during the previous era. And if you also wonder how he got here after Amazon Lily. The whole situation with Boa Hancock was a go-to weeks before the current timeline. Perfect. Blackbird brings with him Jesus Burgess, Van Auger, Doc Q, and Stronger. They all have new devil fruit powers. Jesus Burgess, the strength fruit. Doc Q has the disease fruit, which he can infect people with diseases. Van Auger has a very problematic one, ha. Huh? Teleportation fruit, where he can teleporting people, and Stronger. Doc Q's horse got a Pegasus Zoan. It's hilarious that his Zoan form is basically the horse with wings, because he's already a horse. We finally understand, guys, Blackbeard's movements foreshadowed at the end of Leavely. Attacking the Shichibukais, like Boa Hancock, to get their devil fruit, and not only that. Waiting for the right moment to steal the copies of the Poneglyphs that came out of Wano. He knew that there were only three possible paths after Wano, Egghead, Elbaf, and Winter Island. Which is where they are now. 
and unfortunately for Law, he becomes prey to the darkness. Winner takes all, but considering that Blackbird has never been defeated, things get complicated. And when it comes to Teach, we shouldn't be shocked by his two powers coming from Devil Fruits. We should fear when his hidden power makes him beat everyone off screen. Even Shanks, the redhead, has already witnessed such power and received a mark that hurts to this day. My friends, Blackbird has finally made his move, Hunt wanting to get Law's road upon a glyph, to become the next Pirate King. What do you have to fear from Blackbird? These off-screen fights, these off-screen fights are inexplicable. It goes beyond these two devil fruits of his, he defeated Marco in the War of Reckoning. He injured Shanks, who was already powerful as hell, that scar there, before the devil fruits yet. So what's Blackbeard's secret, right? That's it my friends. I hope you liked this episode and this video. If you liked it leave a like. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.